Something else to keep in mind, uh, my wire was getting low in my welder, so I had my wire speed turned up a little, pushing it through. Kind of kinks and acts up when it gets to the end of the spool. So anyway, um, you want to make sure when you're welding, especially something like this, that you have your wire speed low enough that you're actually welding and not just filling the hole. Because the first thing I did, this, this uh, stud broke off in me. The others are holding well, but this one broke. I uh, I have replaced my uh, my with a new spool of welding wire anyway. So I'm gonna have to weld this one back in. Another thing I I, know I thought of while I was doing it, my my uh, studs were cool, but if you're putting on lock nuts. Make sure you're not putting them on with hot studs and they're freshly welded in because you're gonna defeat the purpose and nylon in your lock, knock, lock nut will uh, melt. I was mentioning my MIG welder. There's not a big expense to buy a MIG welder. This is a Mastercraft. I got it on sale, I don't know, I think it was $250, something like that. I've seen them on for even less now, a couple hundred bucks sometimes. It actually will take uh, argon gas on the back. There's a hose on the back of it. You can just get the wire feed. I just use it with the flux core wire. It's all you really need. You can't really use uh, outside. You can't use a MIG welder outside because the gas will just blow away in the wind. So you have to use the flux core anyway. So uh, these things are very inexpensive, very easy to use. Very little instruction anybody can use it. I just have a little handheld visor for it and uh, I do have a helmet I bought, but I misplaced it. I'm not sure where it is. And there's a tap and die set. Those go on sale too. They're very inexpensive. Come in handy like you wouldn't believe. So there you go. You probably get those even cheaper if you're in the States. But a couple hundred dollars for a MIG welders. Everybody should have one. Just don't use them indoors. You can burn your house down or your garage down or your shop down. You get a spark flying somewhere and stuck in the floor underneath a piece of plastic. Anyway, there you go. So, Alright, there's our first uh, rubber installed. First uh, part of our impeller kit. This go a lot quicker if I didn't stop to film everything, but uh, as you can see there's one one bolt head there, but that's not much to catch now. The other end behind. There's our one inch strap. And we have plenty of rubber there to fill that gap. It may let it wear in, it may trim it a little, but that's how it's done. Now if you wanted to uh, leave bolt heads there, that's fine with me too. And if you were doing this on a machine, you would obviously be drilling down. you take the chute off, and you would drill down from the top. You know, through there. Make it a little difficult, a little harder to do, but I'm sure we could do it. There's a will to learn, there's a way. You may need a drill, drill bit extension. Anyway, that's what it looks like. One down, three to go. It's getting pretty dark out, but I stuck the impeller in with the, the one rubber installed. You see that gap? That gap is filled, huh? Pretty dark to see, but... That'll wear in or we'll trim it. It's gonna take some paint off if we decide to paint this snow blower. That's what it does. Fills that quarter inch to three eighths gap. So here we are in the garage today. It's raining out and it's actually dark at the moment. So you can see here's the uh, three studs we welded in the other day and I had the rubber in the back and the backing plate holding it on. Well since then I've decided that this is a an 8 horsepower, it's only a 26 inch. I think it's got more than enough power to handle uh, a heavier load than what uh, a little impeller uh, rubber would put in that modification. So I decided on this one I'm going to run the rubber right up around. Now I've already had it all on there, these are the 
pieces I already had on and they're cut and marked and drilled, backing plates are drilled. So I have the three holes here as you can see and we'll be cutting off bolts. These are inch by uh, quarter. I had uh, three quarter by quarter last time so I'm going to be cutting them off the same length. And they're going to be welded in as studs from the back side. Welded in the studs from the back side, same as uh, last time. You can see I have all the holes drilled in all of the fan blades, the auger, or the impeller blades. So we're going to go out now and cut some of these bolts off. And then I'll be taking the uh, impeller outside to weld the uh, studs in. Wish me luck. 